So let's find out a little bit before we can get into doing the activities we have to know what lies behind it where did it come from so that we can understand how it works and then we can make it work properly so this is dr montessori and she gave the world a new understanding of what do children need so that they can develop to the best of their ability and realize their true potential. She changed the way children were educated. This is what traditional classrooms look like. This is what she transformed it to. How many of you went to schools like this? Yeah? And how many are sending children to schools like this now? Right? This is what more what it looks like. This is what it should look like. Where, like you said, children are learning at their own pace. They're using concrete materials. They're using tactile things. They're learning with all their senses. That is a more useful, a more helpful, a deeper kind of learning. Okay. So, how did she come out with this system of education? It was through observation. She was born in a very small town in Italy and she was born to a mother who in those days was educated, which was rare. Women really did not have education in the 1800s. She was born in 1870 and uh, her father was from the military services and she was very intelligent from a young age. She really wanted to study and her father didn't encourage it so much but her mother encouraged her a lot to go out and pursue her dreams and she grew up and she said I want to be a doctor. Now in Italy in the eight, late 1800s there were no female doctors. You weren't even allowed to study medicine. So when she applied to medical college she was rejected and rejected and rejected. So she had no choice and she went to engineering school, but while she was there, she still continued to appeal to the government, to appeal to the ministers, whoever she could, that she wanted to get into medical school. And it was finally the Pope at that time who granted her permission to enter medical school. And she went on to become the very first woman doctor, which in those days was, I mean, a huge accomplishment. Now you know when you're studying medicine you have to do internships and you go with doctors and you study under them and one day she accompanied some doctors to a facility for children with disabilities. In those days they didn't call them special needs and things like that. They called them mental asylums. So they went there just to check on the children's physical skills. Okay, How are they doing physically? When they went, they took a lot of snacks for them. The children ate the snacks and then the doctors were ready to check them up. She noticed that these children started playing with the breadcrumbs. They were taking the breadcrumbs and rolling it in their hands and the mouth. And one of the caretakers there said, look at these children, they're so greedy. They've eaten so much and even the crumbs they won't give up on. And she realized it wasn't that because they were really were full. So she thought, why is this happening? Why are they playing with the breadcrumbs? What's going on? And she noticed, she looked around, she's a scientist, right, by, nature, by profession. So she looked around and she saw that these children are in a classroom and in a, in a room with no stimulation. There's no pictures, there's nothing to touch, there's nothing to feel, there's nothing to see. They have no sensory stimulation and that's what they were craving. Something to touch, something to feel. So she went back home and she thought about it and she says, no, we must do something for these children. In those days, if you had any kind of mental disability or physical disability or whatever, they would just take you and dump you in an institution. Because society felt that these children cannot be educated. They are, can amount to nothing. We cannot do anything with these children. So they were just, parents didn't know how to deal with it. But she said, no, we can educate these children. And she looked into the works of other people and she saw some things that they had done. She appealed and she says, I want to work with these children. So she was appointed the head of such an institution. And she worked with these children. She watched them. She observed them. And a lot of the things you see on the shelves here today started when she was working with the children with special needs. And she said that if I have to teach these children, if they have to learn anything, they have to learn through their senses. They need to take it in through their eyes, their ears. We cannot just talk and give them a lecture and expect them to understand. They need to experience it. So through their senses, it will impact their mind.
Okay, I want you to imagine that I'm going to tell you that this weekend I went out and I had a baked Alaska dessert. Have any of you had baked Alaska before? Okay, so it's this, it's a dessert and um, it's, hi, it's a dessert that is uh, got fruit and fresh ice cream and berries and syrup and it's covered in a layer of meringue and when they bring it to you it's flaming okay and you cut inside and it's hot and cold at the same time so I'm explaining this to you and in your mind you're trying to imagine what I'm talking about now let's say I brought that baked Alaska and I said to you let's all have a slice of baked Alaska it comes in you see this dessert on fire you see them cut into you 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 get a served in a plate sorry you get a piece served in a plate you smell it you see it you taste it you feel it now next week when somebody tells you hey I had this dessert called baked Alaska you know what they're talking about right because you've experienced it through your senses it goes into your brain and it stays there that's what she says we have to do with these children we have to let them have sensory experiences so these children she worked with them they were made to sit for a test and they passed with such amazing results that everybody was astounded and that came to be known as the first Montessorian miracle that wow you know we can actually educate these children I have a son one of my sons has special needs and I've done a lot of the activities Montessori has helped me a lot to help him learn today he's going to a school where two of our graduates from our course are working in that school using their Montessori skills to help the children who have special needs because it really does work with all children of different abilities okay so she's achieved so much she's become the first woman doctor she's already taught children that people thought we cannot educate them but she hasn't given up yet she says why cannot why can't we change for all the children why can't all children learn this way this is such a good way of teaching because she used to see children sitting like this like you saw in the picture like we went to school and she said it would disturb her she says this is not their true nature she said when I see them they look like butterflies pinned to a board what is a butterfly's true nature to fly if I take a butterfly and I pin it down to a board I'm going against its nature what do children like to do they like to move they want to touch you take them somewhere they're touching they're feeling they're talking and what do we do to them in school sit here's your book write and then sit down for an hour and then we tell them to move how do you expect that child not to get frustrated and rebel against you you're going against his nature that's not his nature children's nature is to move she, for her movement was very important she said if you don't move you cannot learn it's not going to happen okay so she said let's change it for all the children and so they gave her a little school the government gave her a small school in the poorest area of Rome called San Lorenzo with a bunch of children who were very unruly both the parents were in the workforce um, and they were left alone all day to do what they want she took these children and she set up her first Montessori school called Casa de Bambini which means house of children now over there she would watch the children and she would see what excites them what frustrates them what annoys them what makes them happy what makes them concentrate and that's how little by little by little the entire Montessori philosophy unfolded one of the things for example initially she didn't have open shelves okay in the beginning there were cupboards and every morning the teachers that she worked with would come in the morning and say okay here's this material you can work with this you are going to work with this and you are going to work with this the teachers would choose for the children now one day at the end of the day the teachers forgot to lock the cupboards so the next morning the children came and they all took what they wanted and that day she saw a huge difference in the level of concentration of the children in the amount of time they could spend with an activity and how much they applied themselves the effort that they used to work with that because they chose for themselves that was the day she got rid of the cupboards there were open shelves and the children could choose what they wanted to work with okay
So this is how the whole thing, the whole philosophy unfolded. Now, after some time, these children transformed so drastically. She herself was astounded. She says, I feel like they are new children. There's nothing in them that was there before. All that rowdiness and fighting and aggression and whatever it was, they were completely calm. They were happy. They were sharing. She says they were the true nature of a child, which she called normalized. All children, it has nothing to do with disabilities and you know special needs but the true nature of a child to be happy to love to work to concentrate to share these are their true qualities and they came back to that after going through the Montessori method and then she was invited to America and then Montessori spread far and wide okay and she traveled a lot to different places to the Netherlands to India and spread the Montessori philosophy now, she said that in her classroom, the choices that children make are based on their needs and their wants that come from within them, not based on what I think you should be doing right now. What happens then is that the children are internally motivated, intrinsic motivation. In school, when we went to school, we were always rewarded for our work. So, hey, you did this, you get a sticker. You did this, you get 10 on 10. And so all our motivation was coming from outside. Nothing was making me happy to learn. Do you get me? From within. But in Montessori, children are internally motivated. That's where the creativity comes from. That's where the innovation comes from. That's where the open thinking comes from. One of the most important things in Montessori philosophy is that she said, all children have an inner teacher. They are born with something inside them that guides them. Why is it that two children come into this classroom, one goes to math, one goes to language? There's something inside them that's guiding them. And it's very important for us to recognize that as parents, to understand that our children have something inside them, their own potential, and our golden words here are that we should follow the child. So we recognize that in our child and we build on that. Okay.